All right, well, welcome to Pennsylvania once again. Today we're in Dauphin County, not too far from the state capital, Harrisburg. And I am at the Boyd Big Tree Preserve. It's kind of like a state park, but it's not. But anyway, I'm going to be spending a good amount of time here, making several other videos, do some hiking up here, and maybe walk around some of these fields, get some nature videos as well. But that's not what this video is about. When I was uh, researching this place a little bit the other night, um, I was looking at the map again, and I noticed it's mentioned that there was a cemetery here at the preserve. It's actually not. Um, it's on the preserve, but I don't think it's part of the preserve. So we're going to go check that out. I think it's just behind me here in this little, uh, we're turning the camera around back in that little copse of trees, that little area of trees back there. So I really know nothing about it. I tried to do a little bit of re research on it, but I couldn't come up with a whole lot. So, But I didn't spend like tons of time researching it either. So in a little bit, we're going to head in there. So up that way is the parking for the actual preserve. Like I said, over here is where I believe the cemetery is. Of course, the driveway goes down. That's, uh, that's 443 down there, Route 443. So that's where we are. And there's some uh, flags out here too. So I think it helps to denote that there's a cemetery back here. So let's go ahead and walk back here together. I have no idea what it looks like back here or how old these tombstones will be. I was here at the preserve like five years ago, but I had no idea that this was here. So this is a, uh, you're experiencing this with me here as a new experience. Looks like there's a, there's a fence around it here. That's kind of cool. It's lined with flags. You know, it's pretty cool. partially overgrown. So we will walk around and take a look. Looks like there is some damage though, a lot of markers laying down. Okay, so it is pretty big too. It goes all the way over over in there as well. All right, I'm I'm liking this. So yeah, we're going to spend some time walking around. I know some of you love these videos and some of you hate them, but I do love walking around an old cemetery. And this one has a cool feel to it, actually. A lot, lot of it is overgrown, which is kind of a shame, but it does give an old cemetery like this a certain uh, feel or ambiance, I guess you could say. It has all these large trees growing in here as well, back behind me. It's pretty cool. So like I said, unfortunately, I don't really know a whole lot of information about it. But uh, it probably does have a name. So if one of you knows that, you can go ahead and share it. But anyway, I'm going to quit blabbing and uh, walk around. And I'm, we're not going to look at every single tombstone. I, I know some people ask me to take more time looking at more of them. But uh, if, you know, yeah. If I looked at every single tombstone, this video would be three hours long. Which maybe some of you would like, but most of you wouldn't care for that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to looking around. Alright. Of course, once again, I do like how it's lined with the American flags as soon as you walk in. That's a nice little touch. They look fairly new as well. So here's the first one in here. Ephraim. There's a name for you. Oh, so it's a double burier. Ephraim, 1854 to 1922, and his wife Mary is here, 1855 to 1927. So like a lot of older grave, you know, cemeteries, some of these are a bit harder to read. Here's that area that looks like a lot of them were pushed over. But you know, I'm guessing too, there's this, that's a pretty large tree. See how the roots are coming out? Sometimes the roots will push grave markers out of the ground as well. So that's a possibility. So 
here's one we can read. I think at the top there it says, Asleep in Jesus. In memory of John Gippel, born in 1804, died in 1878, 73 years old. I think this is his wife over here, Margaret, wife of John Gippel, 1803 to 1880. There are some that are just simple rocks and right here's just a simple rock. Get that on camera there. And over here is another one, it's just a field stone. Nothing elaborate. But there's one right next to it that we can read. I don't think there's anything written on the back side of this one either, no. Let's uh let's see if we can read this one. So this is Elizabeth. We can make much else out down there. It's kind of tilted down towards the tombstone. Yeah, that one's a little hard to read just because it's tilted down at an awkward angle. All these are just laying down flat, too. Yeah, I can't really make anything out on this one though. It's so, so worn out. I think when they lay flat like this, it helps, it just makes them, they weather even faster. But here's a, here's one we can read. Catherine, wife of John Carberick. Never heard of that last name before. 1824 to 1909, aged 85 years old. There's Catherine, and they just kind of continue on. Well, these are kind of busted up pretty badly, though. I mean, it's it's not uh, none of this is recent, like vandalism, because. You know, the, the uh, brakes are pretty old, so this could have happened who knows when. Some of this might have been just natural as well. I don't see any evidence of, like, people recently coming out here and doing stuff. Here's Charles, son of, just has their initials, Stents, born in 1878. Yeah, died in 1878. So January 22nd to July 30th, so just... You know, a couple months old. All right, it continues on down that way. So there's a whole area down there we haven't seen yet. Someone has a little chair out there. It looks like at one time it was nicer because there's some nicer bushes there. So maybe it just doesn't get maintained. So this is within the preserve, but it's not actually the property of the preserve. So I don't know who actually owns the graveyard itself. There's a whole bunch more. It looks like some older ones back there, actually. Yes, yeah, so up there's the entrance where we came in. We kind of walked around up in here already. I'm going to go Check things out over here. It's more overgrown in here. What we got here? Richards. That's the last name. Now these are these barberry plants. Ouch, they got thorns. Looks like 1877 they died. Aged 57 years old. 
Yeah, now there's oh, hands up there. I, I'm talking about that cemetery book that someone sent me with all the what the symbols mean, but I don't remember that symbol where there's two hands holding each other. I'm gonna guess that probably is a religious meaning. Maybe it's a uh, Jesus Jesus walking welcoming welcoming if I could talk correctly. Jesus welcoming them into heaven, like holding their hand, pulling them in. Maybe not sure about that one. Yeah, so in this overgrown area, there's some laying down. Some over here. It's kind of all by themselves. One of these thorn bushes. So we got your brother. We got Jacob, son of Elias and Sarah Schartz. Born in 1861 died in 1912. So that one says mother. Here we have father. So I'm guessing this is the father of Schartz. There's bushes here. Yeah, Elias. Oh, Schartzer. Born in 1834. Died in 1911. So he, he actually died before his son. Well, yeah, it makes sense. They died pretty close. The son was 1912. The father was 1911. All right, so all right, we're gonna get out of this overgrown area. And yes, I will check myself for ticks. I know a lot of you asked me that. I'll give myself a look over. All right, this is a pretty cool find, I think. I didn't really know this was here until I just kind of, it was just kind of a random find last night while looking at the map. But I love, I love these kinds of just random finds. A lot of butterflies in here too. All right, I do plan on filming like up in the meadow here, some butterflies and stuff later today, but they're down here as well. Just some more headstones popping up out of the, the growth here. Marianne, wife of David Schartzer. So there's that name again. Looks died in 1860. So that's a Civil War era time. Memory of David Schartzer, born in 18. That feels like a one there. 18. 13 maybe? Died in 1886. Yeah, probably because he was uh, 72 years old. So, <laughs> so Someone will quick do the math in their head and correct me if I'm wrong, but. It looks like some areas are a little bit more maintained than others. So I think someone takes care of this area a little bit better. That's where the chair is. These all have like little, uh, these quartz rocks laid next to them. Margaret Straw. Oh, there's an older date. 1809 to 1893. Here's the dad. Samuel Straw. Died in 1891. Catherine, wife of Valentine Straw. So these are all straws. Millie Ann Straw, 1863 to 1933. All right, so that's the Straw family. Can't say I've ever heard of that last name either. Let's make our way down to the back part here. Which might be the oldest part of the cemetery. 
Looks a little less overgrown back here as well. Except for this side. A little bit hard to read, but I think it says em Emana Fox. Yeah, because here's the name. Here's Aaron, son of Emana and Elmira Fox. Never heard that name before, Emana or Emana. I'm not sure how you would say it, but... Trying to look at the ones over here first. Yeah, these are the ones that seem kind of more forgotten. They're in this overgrown area. We got a Harriet. Harriet. Does this say Rose? 1866 maybe there. Yeah, there's more even back here. Oh, there's quite a whole pocket of them back here. There's just like whole sections of it. This is a pretty large cemetery actually. And I believe we have some veterans back here. Yeah. We get to the other side here. Yeah, they have flags, I think, for some of the veterans, but they, a lot of times the the veterans have those little, uh, what you've seen in my videos, like to tell you which war they were in. Here's Geraldine, 1918 to, well, this is a newer one. Hold on a second here. To 2000. Oh, wow. So someone was buried in here recently. Well, not, I mean, not, well. You know, 20 years ago. Henry, okay here, Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Army, World War II in Korea, 2001. So interesting. Yeah, it's the same last name for these other ones, so. Alice Fieser Stroh. What does that say on there, though? Hmm. This is full of those little quartz rocks, too. I'm not sure what this stem... If somebody knows what the little... all the quartz rocks mean, you can let me know. Yeah, here's another recent one. Millie Stroh Valentine. 1910 to 2003. Well, here's a really recent one. Ralph Edward Valentine, 2014. Okay, that's kind of neat though. A good friend, it says. Oh yeah, here this one has the the little uh, metal plaque saying he's a veteran. Actually, that that wooden cross has some. That's kind of cool. So that was unexpected. I didn't realize there'd be newer graves like the. 2014, that was just six years ago. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind having that at my grave, my grave site. Just a simple wooden cross that says, a good friend. Actually means a lot, if you think about it. All right, let's take a look at this one other section here, larger section. Yeah, I thought the ones in the back would be the oldest, but those are the newest. I really like this place. It's, I know some people think liking cemeteries is kind of creepy, but uh, a lot of people out there find it to be pretty cool. I know one of my viewers mentioned there's a name for that kind of a person. Something, anyway, sort of the T. All right, let's keep walking around a little bit. It's nice and shaded in here. I love the, because it's just all these big trees and 
like I said before, it just gives us a certain ambiance. These are some more just way in the back. Rebecca Hoover, just his mother, 1836 to 1910. And here's another, oh, this is a baby, just a couple months old. Ruth Caroline Crone, April to June. So like, not even two months old. Yeah, and this is the last area here. These ones in here. Actually, these look newer over here as well. Thompson, yeah, 1986. George and Catherine, well, she died in 1966. He died almost 20 years later. Oops, sorry. There you go. Swigert. I know some Swigerts. My cousin married a Swigert. Like I said, I'm not gonna look at every, I'm not gonna read every single one for you. These are a different style up here from all the others. Okay, these are kind of old. That is a date, oh, does that say, hold on, let me get yeah, in the light there. 1741 to 1819. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. This is all in German too. It's like George something or other. Wow, these are in really good condition too. Okay, so let's, what's the next one over here? Let's see a date of 1820 on that one. It doesn't have a birth date on it. Okay, there's a 1779 on that one. Okay, that's pretty cool. Here's a Mary, wife of Stro. There's that name again, Stro. Looks like it says 1779 to 1858. So there are some older ones back here. Okay, here's the yeah, here's the symbol. Revolutionary War veteran. Because I can't make out the name so well. 1828 would be when he died. Okay, here's another oldie. Skiborum, 1746. Died in 1825. I think this is Margaret. Stucky? That's pretty shaded out there. I'm not sure if you can read that. All right, definitely the oldest ones right here in this area. That's pretty cool. So definitely a cool place. I'm glad I came here. Um, yeah, so we did find the oldest ones here. As far as uh, dates go, 1741, when they were born. So I love, and I've never seen that style of tombstone before. Kind of much thicker than some of the other ones. So pleasant little surprise. I love this place. And there's a there's a smell in here as well. Not a bad smell. Um, sometimes when I go to like a really old house, from like on the outside of the house especially, there's a there's a smell. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not a bad smell, like I said, but I'm kind of catching the scent of that in here, so it just makes this place feel even older to me. I'm kind of curious as to what that smell is now. I wonder if it's coming from a tree or something. But anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this video up here. I've been taking quite a few pictures. I, these are the kind of cemeteries I love. It's There's old dates in here. It's just It's kind of overgrown, but not like completely forsaken and forgotten. This is kind of cool. And the large trees. I'll give you one more view of it before I head out, but yeah. It's actually a beautiful little spot. 
out here. So like I said, I'll give you one more nice little panoramic view. Back there is the one of the, the wooden cross that said a good friend. I like that one. Just beautiful, all these old, there's old pine trees in here. Up there is where that chair was. The entrance where he came into his way up there. Now here are those really old ones from the 1740s. Revolutionary War era. All the way back to the corner back here. Alright, so I'm going to hop back in the Jeep and drive up to the parking area. Do some more filming today. Like I said, I'm going to do some hiking up by the mountain, the trails, and then uh, I might make another video too where I walk around the meadows a little bit. Anyway, thanks for coming along on this cool little adventure here in this awesome little cemetery. Well, it's actually not a little cemetery. Pretty nice. Much bigger than I thought it would be. Alright, hope you enjoyed this and I will see you around. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.